Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. We are Abe Del Mar. This video is part two of the free energy series. But first, before we dive into the meat of today's video, I wanted to first go over and clarify a few things from the last video, part one of this free energy series, in terms of the placements of Lemuria and Atlantis. I had this view for Atlantis, and I had this view for Lemuria, where Atlantis was sort of found in this region of Central and South America in its original placement when it existed on the planet thousands of years ago. And then I had it sort of, due to the shifting land masses, it's now sort of being found or its current placement is here in the North Atlantic Ocean. Um, for Lemuria, I had the original placement somewhere here in the Pacific Ocean around the equator, and due to the shifting land masses, it now being um, in its current placement somewhere up here in the North Pacific Ocean. I just kind of wanted to clarify these maps a little bit more because of the sphere maps that I'm portraying in these photos. I wanted to kind of take you into the map so that you, we can see it a little bit better from the map's perspective versus those screenshots, which actually don't really do it justice because the distances I noticed are a little bit um, skewed from what I have here in the in these screenshots of where the original placements of Atlantis and Lemuria were um, versus where they shifted. It doesn't seem like much of a shift here that I have indicated, but when I look at this interactive sphere of the globe, the distances are a little bit farther apart. So I wanted to kind of take you on this little journey. So here we have the section of where um, the original placement of Atlantis could be. And then in terms of shifting land masses, where Atlantis could be located at current day, what came to me was that it more existing in the northern part of the North Atlantic Ocean. Um, Ireland had come to me in terms of maybe Ireland being part of the original landmass of, of um, Atlantis. I'm not 100% sure, but this is sort of the general area. And so as you can see, that distance of the shift of landmasses is a lot greater. And now if we spin around to the Pacific Ocean, we have here, I indicated that the original landmass of Lemuria existed somewhere east of Papua New Guinea. Um, and then due to the shifting landmasses, it's sort of coming all the way up here to the northern region of the North Pacific Ocean, encompassing the coast of the United States, possibly, even maybe spanning out to Colorado. Um, and there are connections in terms of the Native Americans being connected to Lemuria, so that's quite possible. But as you can see, that distance is a lot farther as well um, between its original placement and where it could possibly be existing today. Um, that distance is a lot greater from what I showed you here in this map. Um, so I just wanted to make that a bit clear because these maps of the screenshots were not as clear in terms of placement. So another thing to note is that during the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis, when they were overtaken by water, it's possible that the Lemurians and the Atlanteans fled um, and survived elsewhere. So in the case of Atlantis, if Atlantis is currently located around this region of the North Atlantic Ocean, it's possible that during the fall of Atlantis, Atlanteans um, may have scattered to places um, land masses that may have existed at that time, similar to this area of Europe, um, Egypt even, Africa, um, along this coast. Um, if we go around to where Lemuria existed 
during the fall of Lemuria when water overtook this landmass, it's possible that the Lemurians or some Lemurians escaped and fled to areas if there were if there was a landmass possibly around this area during the time of Lemuria. Um, it's possible they have they fled to parts of um, the the North America, um, maybe even Mexico, um, Central America. Um, which again was not located in this exact placement due to the sh due to the shifting landmasses. It would have been placed more around this area, um, but you never know. Again, the placement of Lemuria and Atlantis is purely based upon my own inner thought and intuition and information that was coming through for me. Another thing that came up is that the energies of where Lemuria and Atlantis, um, these areas of where the original landmasses are located at current day, these areas are also activating in energy as well because these original landmasses hold, they still hold the power of the energy of Lemuria and Atlantis. It is, um, it is in the blood, it's in the bones of the land is what's coming through. It is, they're, they're showing me myself and how I'm, originally from Hawaii. I was born and raised in Hawaii and now I'm living on the mainland. And even though I'm I've moved, I've I am away from my original placement, I still hold the energy of Hawaii. I still embody Hawaii. And that's what's happening to these original landmasses. They still hold the energy of ancient Lemuria and Atlantis and it's always going to be held within their land. So Lemuria is right now in current placement, approximately in the area of the Northern Pacific Ocean. So this area is going to begin activating in energy. Um, Hawaii Islands are going to activate with strong Lemurian energy. Um, the west coast of the United States is going to begin activating with strong Lemurian energy, um, possibly all the way to Colorado, Arizona, um, the Pacific Northwest even the um, over, out over the Pacific Ocean. And what's coming through is the energy from the Pacific Ocean. That's going to cause um, strong weather patterns to possibly affect the coast of the west coast of the United States because this strong Lemurian energy is activating um, in this area. There's going to be strong um, energetic weather patterns and behaviors in this area, in this region. And if we take a look at where Atlantis is currently located, um, the original place, the original landmass uh, where it's located right now in current day, um, this area of the Atlantic Ocean is going to start stirring with a lot of strong Atlantean energy coming to the surface in terms of strong weather patterns coming from the Atlantic Ocean um, strong energy being activated in Europe and again along the coasts of all of these um, countries and regions. And they're showing me how the old Lemuria and Atlantis landmasses, they've been dormant, they've been sleeping for a long time because Inner Earth Heart was closed, because Inner Earth Heart was darkened um, and very weak. Now as Inner Earth Heart begins to strengthen and open in energy, these landmasses of original Lemurian Atlantis are going to begin awakening as well. And that's going to be the awakening of the energy of Lemurian Atlantis stirring in these oceans of Atlantic, of the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean in these regions, bringing forward um, in the form, bringing forward their energy in the form of strong weather patterns and also just energy in the regions that are closest to these areas. Um, very, very strong vibrations coming through in terms of of original landmasses of Lemuria and Atlantis, as well as their original placements, because the portals are still held in the original placements of where they used to exist. Another thing I wanted to point out was in terms of the pole shift, like I said, what was brought forward is that the planet, the Earth, is not going to physically shift North Pole to South Pole and South Pole to North Pole. Um, 
what's going to happen is an energetic shift. So an internal energetic shift is happening like an internal north energy moving to the south and internal south moving to the north. Um, but we're not turning upside down physically. And this is something that I thought was going to happen, that we would completely flipped, flip and rotate the entire planet. I'm getting from Abe that it's not going to happen. Um, there are other shifts that might make us feel like it's happening. And what came through is that the galaxy changes or actually our placement in the galaxy changes because remember as we shift from 3D into 5D we are shifting literally into a new planetary system into a new solar system um, technically still the same but it is a heightened and more ascended um, galaxy and our placement in that new ascended galaxy as earth will be completely different it will we will exist in a different placement in the solar system. So our placement in 3D solar system is different from our placement in the 5D solar system. So that will contribute a lot to the way that we perceive the pole shifts in terms of the north and south poles um, based upon maybe the, the um, galactic or the astrological um, structures, the um, stars in the sky that we see will change, making us think that we are physically shifting. But again, Abe was saying that we are not physically shifting. I think maybe just outside of us is shifting. I, I can't be 100% sure, but um, to know that we are staying the same in terms of Earth, um, but everything else is shifting. Uh, maybe even land masses might be shifting. Um, energy is shifting our placement in the solar system is shifting. I just wanted to throw that out there as something to consider in terms of the whole pole shift and physical um, aspects of the pole shift. So there are a lot of, or there is a lot of information out there that is fear-based when it comes to the pole shift. Um, I want to first start off by saying that the information that we offer on this channel, the information that I'm offering about the pole shift is it does not come from a fear-based perspective. The information that Abe brings forward comes from a higher vibrational, more of a 5D perspective. So this kind of brings us into um, the idea of reality constructs. So like everything, we create our own reality when it comes to the ascension process, we are basically creating our own reality in the way that we go through the ascension process. I was talking about in a past video regarding the sun and how there is the 3D construct and the 5D construct. And in these two constructs, we're seeing a different sun. Um, the 3D reality is seeing a version of the sun in a different sense. And the 5D reality or 4D reality is seeing a whole other sun in its own sense. This goes back to reality constructs, how we are existing in the same place, but there are different layers to the same place. We all are perceiving our realities based upon the lens that we have in front of our eyes. And this lens is made up of our vibrations and it depends upon where you're vibrating. Are you vibrating at the 3D construct level or are you vibrating at um, the 4D and 5D construct level? So it's sort of coming into my awareness that the same thing is possible when it comes to the pull shifts um, that people are experiencing very many different types of things when it comes to the pole shift. Um, it's possible that in the 3D construct, there could be a physical rotation of the poles versus strongly in my awareness when it comes to the higher vibrational constructs of 4D and 5D, it won't be a physical rotation. It will be an energetic rotation um, when it comes to the pole shift. So that's what I wanted to add regarding these two di very different perspectives when it comes to the pole shift. 
Um, again, everything is about what you resonate with. So whatever you're going to be resonating with very strongly resonates with your vibration. So in this ascension process, if you want to rise up into the higher vibrations, make sure you're surrounding yourself with higher vibrational content, information, um, just be more mindful regarding the information that you consume and how it affects your personal vibration. Okay, thanks for sticking with me while I clarified those maps. Now let's get into the meat of today's transmission regarding free energy, talking more about the equator, Ecuador, and even bringing in some information about Tesla. So in part one, we spoke about Atlantis and Lemuria and the pole shift. Um, in this video going forward, we're going to be continuing to speak about all of that and how it's connected to this idea of free energy in our current shifting world on our planet. So if you haven't yet watched part one, I'm going to put a link to that video in the description below. So again, I just want to clarify that information in this video is based strictly on my own theory and interpretation from my spirit guidance team, Abe, and my inner loss knowledge. So like we mentioned in part one, there are energy portals along the equator line where energy of inner earth seeps through to the surface. Central America resides strongly on the equator line. However, the country of Ecuador resides nearest to or exactly on the equator line with access to one of these very strong energy portals. What came through is that Ecuador dominates Earth in the energy of the equator, meaning that a lot of inner Earth energy rises in the area of Ecuador through this energy portal. I asked, where does it come from? Does it come from the ground, the people? Like exactly, where is this portal? And what came through is that the portal opens into the energy of Ecuador. It is found in the open energy contained in Ecuador. Energy cannot be contained, but the energy is strengthened by the area. An area serves as like a magnet to attract and contain energy. This is why there are energy portals throughout the entire planet. For example, the energy of Hawaii cannot be found anywhere else in the world. It is magnetic to just Hawaii. The energy of Los Angeles cannot be found anywhere else in the world. It's contained in a way to just Los Angeles in a magnetic way. And the energy of New York City, the energy of Hong Kong, the energy of Paris, the energy of many different cities all around the globe. It, the area of these cities or places or regions act as this magnetic portal of energy in a way that contains the energy of that region. And they're basically saying that the energy in Ecuador is very strong in terms of inner earth energy, and it contains that energy within Ecuador. They said that the energy of Ecuador cannot be found anywhere else in the world. There are many other strong energy portals along the equator that bring forward strong inner earth energy, but they are found under the ocean. And I think they're mostly talking about those strong inner earth energy portals found in the original placements along the equator um, nearby Lemuria. They went on to say that Ecuador and other strong areas around the surface and on the equator are a portal to instant energy of inner heart of Gaia. Open free energy is available to be harvested in Ecuador. Ecuador holds strong energy of inner heart of Gaia. The heart of Gaia was darkened and dimmed for a very long time following the fall of Atlantis and Lemuria. However, it is growing stronger and brighter due to the work of the light workers and the holding of higher vibrational energy both within and without the planet. Higher vibrational energy of the ascension and light workers opens a brighter inner earth heart 
With renewed strength of inner earth heart comes renewed strength and energy that seeps through the surface of the earth through these strong energy portals along the surface equator. Most of these energy portals are below the ocean, but Ecuador is a major energy portal that exists above the surface. The energy portals below the ocean are responsible for the creation of many strong weather patterns. The energy portal in Ecuador will be responsible for open, free energy central to your planet. Open, free energy comes from Ecuador through the Tesla machine is what came through. So again, I was talking about the inner earth heart. If you haven't yet watched my video, I did a past video about inner earth heart. It's called Raw Energy Restoring 3D Inner Earth Heart. I'll put a link to that video below. That was the first time that I spoke about this inner earth heart or the inner earth sun and how it was dimmed following the fall of Atlantis and Lemuria and how we're basically working to help brighten it or strengthen it through our raising of consciousness and vibration and frequency on the planet. It is being integrated within the earth Gaia into her heart to help open up her heart as we open up our own individual hearts once again. And this is all part of the ascension process as we lift up out of the density of 3D and into the higher vibrations of 5D. Okay, so going forward, they begin talking about the Tesla machine. They said that Tesla invented a machine that could harness open energy in the atmosphere and provide free energy to all. This machine is central to Earth's ascension and somewhat generating a freer source of energy. We say somewhat freer source of energy because nothing is free on your planet. There is a give and take to all, an energy exchange that must balance out. Even Abe is not free. Jessica has had to give up many things, go through many challenges in her decision to integrate Abe over a life of what you would call ignorance is bliss. Many of you are choosing and deciding to integrate your higher vibrational aspects, your higher oneness aspects in which you are moving towards in your 5D body. So you're integrating your higher light body. And this is an energy exchange that's happening within your body as you go through your own process. So the love that you give your body is the love that your body is going to shift into. Everything is an energy exchange. That's something strong that's been coming through Abe regarding our ascension process. And understanding this energy exchange between all things and how offering strong energy brings strong energy back to you. Offering strong love and oneness brings strong love and oneness back to you. And it not only affects you, but it affects the entire planet. It affects the people around you. So this is something to keep in mind in the back of your head regarding strong energy exchanges happening as we rise in frequency and vibration. In 3D, there's been a lot of give, 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 and a lot of um, take, take, take. So the energy exchange has been a little bit imbalanced in the collective. People can give so much, but they don't know how to receive. People can take so much and not give enough. So, so that's something that's going to be balanced out as the collective energy is balancing out. We're balancing um, the energy exchange being given between all things, between us as individuals, between us and the planet, um, between us and other people's services. This is all things that are going to be balanced out in a higher vibrational aspect. They go on to say that this free energy source, meaning the energy coming from these energy portals of inner earth Gaia along the equator surface, um, especially in Ecuador, this free energy source has been given to you by Gaia, but you humans of Earth must give a strong energy of appreciation back in order to receive it and continue to receive it over our journey and expansion into the higher vibrations and into new Earth. 
opening to the Lemurian energy of love and oneness on your planet during this great shift will require strong love and oneness energy back. So what's happening in our ascension process is Lemurian energy is beginning to open up more and more strongly versus over these past many years, hundreds of years, it's been the Atlantean energy that's been overtaking the planet, overruling the planet, basically. Um, and now during this ascension process, as we raise in vibration, Lemurian energy of love and oneness is going to begin opening up more and more on the planet. And they're saying that to open up more and more of this Lemurian energy on the planet, we have to be able to give strong love and oneness energy back again with this energy exchange. They're saying that as Gaia gives us more and more through this raising of vibration, the people of your planet must also give back. This is the equal exchange of energy. They then say that our energy vortexes are spinning faster in the higher vibrations and as we move up into the higher vibrations. So as our energy vortexes spin faster, our give and take exchange between us and the planet becomes of higher frequency and vibration of love and oneness. In the 3D planet, the energy vortexes spin slower and it spins lower in the lower vibrations and the give and take between us and the planet are of lower frequency and vibration of the lower energies such as not love and not oneness. They said because not love and not oneness is present in your 3D current planet, the heart of inner earth Gaia is not fully open. So they connect to each other, like I said, after the fall of Lemurian Atlantis, the inner earth heart became darkened and dimmed as it plunged into the lower frequencies and the lower dimensions. Inner earth heart of love and oneness cannot seep to the surface of your planet from these strong energy portals along the Earth's equator, meaning that when Gaia's inner heart was closed and darkened and dimmed, the strength of inner Earth could not seep to the surface of the planet. So this also kind of coincides with how I was talking about how the portals along or around Earth and as well as the equator stays the same, everything else shifts. The only thing that changes is the strength of energy coming through the portals. Um, so they're saying that with inner earth heart being dimmed and darkened, the energy from inner earth was very weak. It couldn't come through the portals. And then they're saying that with the opening of inner earth heart once again, love and oneness will begin to pour out to the surface and seep onto your planet more and more. So again, as inner earth heart strengthens and opens, more inner earth energy can come to the surface and open up into the surface through the equator, through these energy portals along the equator. I asked, can the Tesla machine be planted anywhere for free energy, meaning anywhere on the planet? And what came through was yes, but opening the Tesla machine in the host region of Ecuador is strong enough to provide free energy for the entire planet. The Tesla machine can harness free energy anywhere, but opening a Tesla machine in Ecuador can strongly power not only the major countries, but anywhere on the planet. Open Heart of Inner Earth Gaia wants to give this gift to the world in 5D New Earth. So as I've been bringing forward information about free energy, Tesla, Ecuador, the equator, um, more information started coming through. I thought that this energy, or I thought that this series was only going to be two parts, but I'm going to add a third part because as I was bringing forward information, Nikola Tesla actually started stepping forward. His energy wanted to come forward through Abe um, to offer some more input regarding the Tesla machine, regarding free energy, regarding this statement that I just talked about 
in how one place, Ecuador, can provide free energy for the entire planet. We're going to talk more about how that's possible in part three of this video series, so keep your mind open regarding um, what we're talking about. So the next thing I asked was, what needs to be done? How do we move forward? And what came through was, open free energy in Ecuador is opened with an open portal. Open the portal by giving love to the earth. Giving love to the earth opens the inner heart of earth more and more. Everything is connected and integrated into a chain reaction. And Abe said that they sensed this chain reaction from the outside, the heightened perspective of Abe, and therefore they're offering us this information. They said Ecuador will become a hub for free energy and New Earth 5D. North America is a powerful country in your current day 3D Earth. In 5D New Earth, South America will become a powerful country, but not powerful in the current 3D Earth definition. More so powerful in the sense of being able to supply the Earth with abundance, not through greed of any kind or the lower um, emotions or energies, but through joined hearts and the desire to help the world and make it a better place, I guess. I then wanted to know more about how Atlantis and Lemuria generated power, so I asked how did they generate their power um, back when they had their civilizations? And what came through was that Lemuria generated power through the equator grid. They accessed the heart of Gaia and used it to power not only their knowledge of love and oneness, but to power their land. The heart of Gaia generated power to their land. The land is what powered their civilization. Think bioluminescence from nature, light from crystals. The energy that was powered from the equator, the energy from the heart of Gaia, which powered their land, was reflected into the outer sun. In the equal exchange of heart, love, and oneness, the outer sun reflected the inner sun. So again, this was a time of high vibrational energy, open inner heart energy um, within and without the planet. And then I saw that the outer sun sort of brought a type of solar power to the land, which helped to power the nature and the land. The Lemurians held energy centered around nature and the sun to generate power for their civilization. And actually more about how Lemurians generated power comes through in part three of this video series, so look out for that. Then they said that Atlantis generated power from the equator grid as well, the inner heart of Gaia energy. They generated power through the outer sun as well, through the atmosphere and the energy and the open energy of the atmosphere. They had more scientific knowledge and technology, so they generated power based around their scientific minds. They had inventions versus the Lemurians had more of a natural approach to generating their power. Um, the Atlanteans had a device similar to Tesla's machine is what came through. It wasn't Tesla's machine, but it was similar. It harnessed the energy from the equator power grid and the outer sun and the outer atmosphere to integrate energy throughout their whole civilization. And actually I saw one big tower that powered Atlantis with free energy. Um, and more about this comes through in part three, so I won't talk too much about it here, but we'll talk more about how Atlantis powered or, or generated power during that time in part three. Um, along with more about Tesla and his input about free energy and his inventions and generating energy in Atlantis and Lemuria. Um, and that's what needed to come through regarding free energy at this time for this video. Um, again, we're going to talk more and expand upon some of these ideas in the next video in part three, so be sure to look out for that video.
I hope this video sparks something within you to open up your own inner lost knowledge to bring forward more information about free energy, more information about Lemuria and Atlantis and its connection to what we're going through right now in our shift, in our expansion, in this ascension process, moving into higher vibrations. Um, we're all bringing forward a piece of knowledge and information that adds to the bigger puzzle. We all have a key to the bigger puzzle. So I hope this brings forward something found within you, and I hope you can share the knowledge that you hold within you. Uh, feel free to join our free Facebook group. You can share there, ask questions, add your own comments and your own experiences and your own inner knowledge in a community that is like-minded. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Abe in Oneness is complete. Oneness and love be with you.